In this video, I'm going to talk to you about 25 things you absolutely need to know about the Paycheck Protection Program. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt! Hi everybody, this is Jeff Schmidt with Deductions.Tax and welcome to another episode. This episode is about the Paycheck Protection Program and this document right here, which is the what's called the Interim Final Rule Document. And for those of you who have ever had to read a government document, you'll know that they're not easy to read. And so I've spent a lot of time coming up with what I think to be the 25 most important takeaways from this document. This document's called the Interim Final Rule. All Interim Final Rule means that it's the final rule ish subject to change which is clear as mud for most of you i know but when the government needs to speed up and get something through quickly sometimes there are minor documentation mistakes that are made and as a consequence they always reserve the right to make changes around the edges on what's written so let's talk about the categories i've broken them down into three different categories things you probably know because if you're watching this video my guess is it's not the first video on the payroll protection program you've watched things you may or may not know, and things you probably don't know that are right in this document here. So let's start off with the things that you probably know just to cover them off really quickly. Number one on the Paycheck Protection Program is that the expectation is that you'll use the funds primarily to maintain payroll and keep employees paid at their current rate. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that they're, they're going to give you quite a bit of money and they don't want you to take the money and then fire your staff and use it for, for other things. So the expectation is that you're going to use the money to keep staff employed. Number two, this is a forgivable loan if you follow the rules and use the funds primarily to pay salaries of employees and other related costs. Number three is you can take out this loan for up to $10 million or two and a half times your average payroll for a pre-designated period of time. If you want to know how to calculate what that pre-designated period of time is, there's another video on Holy Schmidt which shows you how to do it. But for conversation's sake, let's say it's last year's payroll divided by 12 and multiplied by 2.5. Number four, again, which you probably already know, this program is for businesses with 500 or fewer employees, all the way down to one, i.e. you, if you're a sole proprietor. Number five, expanding on that, if you're a sole proprietor, self-employed, independent contractor, one-person LLC, etc., you fall into the category of qualifying for this loan. Number six, you have to receive the funds by June 30th. And there is a limited amount. There's 349 billion currently available. There's talk of that being expanded, but currently it's 349 billion. So don't wait, apply as soon as you can. Number seven, Again, falling into the category of things you probably know, but if you operate an illegal business, you don't qualify for the loan, of course. Number eight is a little less obvious until I say it out loud, and that is if an owner of 20% or more of the business is in prison, on parole, or under indictment, they don't qualify for this loan. Number nine, the SBA guarantees the loan, so if you have bad credit or no credit, that's okay as long as you're not delinquent or in default on a federal loan, such as a loan from the SBA. And if you are, and it's been more than seven years, then you're still good to go. Number 10, you need to have been in business since February 15, 2020. The government doesn't want you setting up a business only to collect payment on the PPP. Number 11, household employees such as nannies and housekeepers don't qualify when you are calculating the amount of payroll for the loan on the PPP. Number 12, independent contractors don't qualify when you're calculating payroll, primarily because even if they've been with you for a long time, they too can apply for the payroll protection program. And if they apply and you put them on yours, then that's double counting. Number 14, you pay absolutely no fees. There are fees that are paid, but that's paid for by the government to the banks and they're quite significant, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. Number 15, the bank will run you through its anti-money laundering process called the BSA, or the Bank Secrecy Act. So if you're operating an illegal gambling room outside of the back of your dry cleaner, well, you probably shouldn't apply for the loan. Number 16, 
the funds are forgiven if 75% or more of the amount that you receive is used for payroll with the balance used for expenses that are approved by the SBA, such as rent, utilities, insurance, etc. Number 18, if you've received funds for an EIDL, an economic injury disaster loan, that amount can be added to your paycheck protection program balance and still be forgiven if you comply with the 75% rule that we talked about earlier. Number 19, it's widely believed that if you have employees that make $100,000 or more a year, that they can't be used in the calculation of your average payroll, but that's incorrect. It's just the amount over $100,000 that can't be used. So if you had an employee that made $120,000, you can use $100,000 and you have to discard the other $20,000 in your calculation. Number 20, you can only apply for the PPP once, so apply for the maximum now. Don't try to top it up later. 21, the banks make quite a bit of money on this. They receive a fee of between one and 5% of the principal amount that is lent to you. And that's paid for by the federal government. It's an upfront payment. And whether you have the funds for 60 days or two years or somewhere in between, that fee is theirs to keep. Number 22, the owner's pay is also considered part of payroll when calculating the payroll costs. Number 23, speed is the mandate here. The SBA normally has a 30-day waiting period, but the 30-day waiting period has been replaced in this program with expeditiously. Number 24, you do need to evidence your payroll costs. Common ways to evidence include payroll processors like ADP, your payroll tax, 1099s, etc. There are a lot of different options to provide evidence, but the, the bottom line is you do need to show what your payroll is in order to get the loan. Last but not least is number 25. The lending bank will rely on your certification that the information on the application is true, but there is a provision in there that says that if the applicant is committing fraud, they could be faced with charges from the federal government. So make sure that you provide accurate information to the folks at the bank. Gang, that's it. That's my top 25 list. If you have something else to add, put it in the comment section below so that others can learn from, from your experience as well. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if you like it so that others can find it here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.